This is the first FE phone from Samsung since 2021, the S23 FE. Now those two letters stand for Fan Edition, and according to Samsung, it's the phone that they build for fans by listening to what's important to them and then adjusting their hardware accordingly. I guess the question is, have they succeeded in making a phone that the fans will want to buy? And I think the answer to that is a lot more complicated than just a simple yes or no. Let me explain. The S23 FE is a pretty inoffensive phone appearance-wise. It comes in one of several pastel colors, very similar to the iPhone 15s this year, and there's no camera bump here like was present on the S21 FE. You just get three camera protrusions coming out of the glass back. Interestingly, they have this sort of dual tone finish where the sides of the phone and the rings around the cameras are this aluminum gray color instead of having it finished in the exact same green that's on the back of the phone. The only thing I can really say that's a negative about this design is that although the side rails are slightly rounded, the edges are actually kind of sharp and that makes it a little uncomfortable to hold without a case on it, but you know, that doesn't really matter because most of you do put cases on your phone. But then you turn the phone over and things start to get a little bit strange. Now, as a tech guy that's used to handling flagship phones every day, seeing bezels that are this huge on a new phone in 2023 is definitely a little off-putting. In fact, these bezels are even larger than the ones that are in the two-year-old S21 FE. I have to kind of keep in mind that to most people, like the ones that aren't super into tech like I am, the bezels just don't matter. Other than this thick black frame, the display isn't actually that bad. It's a 6.4 inch AMOLED display that runs at 120 hertz and it gets decently bright. It's clearly not a flagship display. It's only 1080p and there's some rainbowing when you sort of look at this thing off axis, but for 97.672% of the people out there, it's totally fine. It feels really fast and responsive to use and for anyone that's coming from a 60 hertz display of pretty much any kind, they're most likely gonna be impressed. And that's a bit of a theme with this phone. It's kind of full of things here and there that might be a little bit disappointing at first, but when you actually use the phone for a little while, you quickly realize that what you thought was a negative is actually just fine. For example, inside this phone is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is a top tier processor, but it's a top tier processor that's like a year and a half old. But again, I have to admit, I haven't found any issues with the performance of this phone. It feels just as fast as the rest of the phones released in 2023. I'm using Nova Launcher and some custom widgets. And even with that running in the background all the time, the phone just hasn't bogged down once. I was also not impressed with the camera system when I was reading through the spec sheet. I mean, sure, the 50 megapixel main camera on the rear is nice, but the rest of the cameras have a much lower megapixel count, especially that telephoto that's sitting at only eight megapixels. In real world use though, the cameras are just fine. I mean, the main camera can actually take some really solid pictures from time to time with decent colors and good contrast. It's not at a flagship level, but I think most people would be totally fine with it. I was right about the 3X telephoto camera though. I mean, eight megapixels is just not enough to produce what I would consider to be a sharp image these days. The thing I was most surprised with was the fact that the 10 megapixel selfie camera is actually pretty good despite not having a super high resolution. What it lacks in photo resolution, it makes up for in battery life. There is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery packed into here, and there's enough juice to get the average Joe through a full day without needing a recharge. Now, I'm not a heavy user, but I found the battery life to be perfectly acceptable even while using custom launchers and widgets. The charging speed for that battery is kind of slow, though it's around 25 watts at its peak, but that is around the exact same speed as the Pixel 8 and the iPhone 15, so I can hardly fault it there. Plus, most people charge their phones at night anyway. The weird thing about the S23 Fan Edition, and maybe I'm getting a little bit too semantic here, is that I would think that someone who is a fan of Samsung is gonna be at least a little bit more tech inclined, or at least tech focused, than the average person. And that's just not where this phone is positioned. It's got a processor that's a year and a half old, older display tech with huge bezels, a mediocre camera system for the most part, and fairly slow wired charging. But here's the thing. For people that aren't in the know about the latest and greatest tech and just want a phone that does the basic tasks well, it's a pretty decent phone at the price it sells for. It's 600 US dollars. It's much cheaper than the iPhone 15 or even the Pixel 8. So while I think Samsung has sort of failed to make the S23 FE a phone that their tech fans would want, they instead succeeded in making a decent phone for everybody else. Maybe they should call it the S23 FEE -E instead, the for everyone else. Stupid. Anyway, <laughs> hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.